games have certainly come a long way since its early beginnings. We've seen nine generations of video game systems, and along the way, we've seen many video game characters rise to fame. In the 90s especially, we saw mascots appear such as Crash Bandicoot, Croc, Spyro, Gex, and many others. But who could possibly forget one of the most iconic video game stars, Lara Croft, who stars in the extremely popular Tomb Raider series. As of 2022, there are three video game versions of Lara Croft. Currently, we have Survivor Lara, who first appeared in 2013 with Tomb Raider, featuring a more vulnerable and squeamish Lara, who has gone on to appear in two further games, Rise of the Tomb Raider and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a woman more hesitant to kill. Prior to that was the iteration of Lara first appearing in 2006's Tomb Raider Legends, aptly named the Legends Timeline Lara. But before all that, was the original Lara that started it all. Whereas Survivor Lara is a bit more reluctant to kill animals, the original Lara runs in, guns blazing, killing everything in her path, regardless of what they are. Oh, some wolves? Dead. How about this big old bear? Hmm. How about it being big old dead? And my goodness, it looks like we've discovered dinosaurs, which we thought were long extinct. What a magnificent day for the science community. But also, y'all are dead. The original Tomb Raider opens with Lara being approached by a man named Larson, working for a woman known as Jacqueline Natla, who is looking to receive an item referred to as the Scion, with Lara being led to the snowy mountain peaks of Peru. The original Tomb Raider takes place across different locations in the world, with Lara's home serving as an optional training level to allow the player to understand the controls of the game, specifically how Lara can run and jump. Lara is very nimble and the player can have her jump all around the place like a child on a sugar high. As well as pretty much every other kind of high, I suppose. <laughs> Lara explains how she can move around, and the player can sidestep, jump forward, backwards or to the sides, and can also back up. The tutorial also explains how Lara can jump large gaps, which is one of the main forms of gameplay found in Tomb Raider and it is very important to know that at times. Jumping in Tomb Raider can be extremely finicky. For example, the player may find a small gap they might need to hop over. To do this, the player needs to press the up button and the jump button. Or there might be a larger gap that needs Lara to do a running start by backing up. However, it's not the simple case of pressing the button and she'll jump. Jump feels a bit more delayed, and if you don't do this correctly, You'll often watch as Lara runs off the edge and dies. Now if you're like me, this happens a lot. If you were to play the console versions of Tomb Raider, you may find that this would be extremely unfortunate, seeing how saving is only available through completing a level, or by accessing limited save crystals found throughout levels. Fortunately for me, I was playing the PC version of Tomb Raider, which allows for the player to save as much as they like. I found myself having to routinely save the game before moments to make sure I didn't have to backtrack. How often did I have to do this? Well, I saved over 200 times. Aside from Lara's home, each location in the world features several levels as Lara explores tombs to locate hidden treasures known as parts of the Scion. Peru is the first story location visited in Tomb Raider, spanning four levels as Lara travels through to locate the Scion. In these levels, Lara starts with trademark dual pistols, which fortunately for us has no ammunition or requirements to reload, which makes it pretty handy to help avoid enemies. Much like the controls, combat for Tomb Raider is also pretty finicky. The player has a button that can be used to draw Lara's weapon. Once Lara is near an enemy, she will automatically aim her weapon at them, which allows her to manoeuvre around and fire rapidly. 
However, at times, Lara doesn't quite fixate on the enemy correctly. There were many times where I tried picking off the enemies from above and I couldn't quite target them. Along the way through all levels are secret areas for the player to find. While Lara is a Tomb Raider looking for treasure, there aren't actually any hidden collectibles in the game and instead the secrets are often simply items such as medipacks and ammo. However, on some levels there are hidden weapons for the player to find, such as a shotgun. Whereas Lara's pistols have infinite ammo, other weapons have limited ammunition, which means finding the ammo can be pretty important. Although the only weapon I seem to have issues in keeping ammo for was the shotgun. Times there were some puzzles that require Lara to locate items, keys, levers across levels. Peru's first two levels are pretty standard, featuring a number of bats and wolves for the player to fight. The third level, however, is where shit gets whack, and Lara suddenly finds herself up against those dinosaurs I mentioned, including a large ass T Rex. At the end of the fourth level, Lara manages to find a piece of the Scion, before being ambushed by Natalie's lackey, Larson. After defeating him, Larson admits Natla intended for him to kill Lara and retrieve the Scion piece, and that she hired a second mercenary known as Pierre to locate a second piece in Greece, leading us into the second location in the game. In Greece, Lara still encounters bats, but also encounters new enemies such as gorillas, lions and crocodiles which present more challenges, especially when swimming in the case of the crocodiles. However, the most prominent enemy that Lara encounters while in Greece is Pierre Dupont himself. Pierre is a bit of a frustrating enemy, appearing frequently throughout the levels of Greece, sneaking up on Lara and firing her. Pierre normally appears when Lara is making progress and will begin firing on her, which makes him incredibly dangerous, coupled with the fact that until the end of Greece, Pierre is unkillable. When the player deals enough damage, he'll scarp her off leaving Lara to heal herself with medipacks she's collected. Now, while Pierre isn't exactly a difficult enemy, he is a somewhat nuisance, although as long as the player stocks up on medipacks from secrets, he isn't particularly a problem, even when encountered for the final time as a boss battle. The biggest enemies, however, come after, and it's the incredibly disturbing Atlantean Centaurs. These creatures are disturbing in every sense of the word, being fleshless creatures that resemble the titans from Attack on Titan and are incredibly impervious to damage and also happen to come with the ability of launching fucking fireballs at Lara. These things are terrifying. <laughs> they also explode when they die which is hilarious. <laughs> After defeating the horrendous abomination and the centaur, Lara manages to snag the second part of the Scion and finds that a final piece is hidden in Egypt, leading to the third area of the game. Along with more dangerous jumps, Lara faces off with more of the creatures like the centaurs she encountered, referred to as Atlanteans, and which feature different varieties, such as the ones that rush around like lions and some that even fly. At the end of the Egyptian levels, Lara faces off once more against Larson, who appears once more to defeat her, although ultimately fails and instead, Lara manages to snag the third and final piece of the Scion. Lara comes to learn that Natla is actually an Antlion, having ruled years prior alongside Hualopec and Tihokin. Probably said that wrong. <laughs> but was frozen by the two after she betrayed them by creating a new race of mutants, although once free, she sought to steal all the remaining pieces of the Scion. Outside, Lara is ambushed by Natla and her lackeys, stealing the Scion and all of Lara's weapons before ordering her remaining henchmen to kill her. Lara manages to escape, however, and stows away on their boat, leading to the final location of the game, the Lost Islands. Due to Natla's henchmen and their grubby little hands, Lara starts with no weapons. She also encounters a few of the henchmen with the most prominent nuisance being this cowboy looking motherfucker, 
who I accidentally stumbled across with no guns and had to watch helplessly as he gunned Lara down using magnums. Alongside this guy is some weird skater kid who has his own skate park and a pair of Uzis to fight Lara, and a large man who uses a shotgun. Once Lara defeats them, she claims back the weapon she lost from them before continuing on to confront Natla. The next level features a horrific landscape of what appears to be pulsing flesh in large incubators containing the Atlantean mutants, including a humanoid mutant that copies everything Lara does. Ugh. At the end of the penultimate level, Lara finds Natsla, who attempts to stop Lara from shooting the Scion, and sends them both flying off the edge with Natsla presumably dying and Lara landing on the platform, facing off against a giant mutant, leading into the final level, which sees Lara face off against the giant Atlantean, which the co-creator Paul Douglas revealed on Twitter to be dubbed internally as the abortion. Ugh. As the player runs to escape before the whole place goes boom, Natla reappears carrying wings and firing explosives at Lara. Once knocked down, I thought it was safe to continue only for Natla to once again get up and start firing at Lara. Once put down, Lara manages to clear the final stretch and reach the boat before the island explodes, ending the original game. Once completed, the player can start a new game, but instead starting with all the weapons that now have unlimited ammo. Although if the player owns the expansion pack, Unfinished Business, or Tomb Raider Gold as it was known in North America, the player gains access to four additional levels, with two being set in Egypt, and the final two being a continuation after defeating Nathla, and contains more sections of Atlantis. In the process of patching the game for better use, it also appears that the patch I had gotten from the Steam support page contained the expansion pack levels, allowing me to access these bonus levels, and while I did start them, I did start to lose interest as I realised there wasn't much else to the game story-wise, and I began to struggle with some of the more difficult puzzles. The original Tomb Raider is a game I didn't really play when I was younger. In fact, I don't think I actually owned it, although I do distinctly remember owning The Last Revelation, but I struggled with that so much that I think it put me off the original series completely and the Tomb Raider games until I played Tomb Raider Legend in 2006. But having played the first game for the first time, I found myself doing something that I haven't done since I was younger. I found myself getting hooked and actively losing track of time, staying up late and having fun playing the game. The Tomb Raider's original game certainly has a lot of clunkiness to it, since the controls feel as much as you'd think for my game from the 90s. But despite this, I also found myself forgetting that this was even a PlayStation 1 era game. As a result, I do honestly recommend this game. Although I think it goes without saying that you might want to play the PC version with patches. Because yeesh. Want to make sure you don't miss out on the next Noir Reservoir video when it's released? then make sure you don't forget to subscribe to Noir Reservoir and click that little bell down there to be kept up to date on all future Noir Reservoir videos. Likes and comments are always appreciated, and why not consider checking out my Twitter for all the dank memes? I'm sure you won't regret it. P probably. So until next time my friends, I'll catch you later.